So, um, Lexington's unique, okay? On the day that I burn, I make about 17 phone calls. I have four different fire departments I notify, three different sheriff's departments, um, and uh, I have about, oh, 10 people on a health list. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Even though the Wildlife Department has some of the best wildlife habitat managers in the country, we realize that Oklahoma is more than 95% privately owned. So that's why we regularly partner with other agencies to host landowner workshops to teach the skills and habits of effective wildlife management to private landowners. Today, these landowners are learning about the benefits of prescribed fire and how to properly conduct one on their property. A wildlife department that prioritizes helping landowners be the best habitat managers they can be. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. I'm Marcus Thibodeau. I'm the co-turkey project leader for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife. Today we're at Pack Saddle Wildlife Management Area in western Oklahoma. This is the location for our Waterways for Wildlife project that's funded through the National Wild Turkey Federation. Along this Canadian River floodplain, we're going to be removing over 2,000 acres of cedar trees. This project was specifically chosen because it has roost trees. It's going to benefit a lot of other wildlife like quail and whitetail deer. And through research we've conducted with Oklahoma State University, we really saw the importance of this corridor when Rio Grande turkeys are moving from their spring and winter roost areas. So this project area includes over 2,000 acres of Canadian River floodplain. And so this habitat consists of a lot of mixed grasses and interspersed cottonwood trees that the Rio Grande turkeys will use for roosting. And so roost trees are the biggest limiting factor in western Oklahoma. So when this woody encroachment happens, turkeys can't utilize them. So removing these cedar trees will allow turkeys to utilize these roost trees. And then also, uh, it's gonna benefit a lot of other wildlife like bobwhite quail and whitetail deer. Hi everyone, I'm Annie Farrell. I'm a district biologist with the National Wild Turkey Federation. I cover Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. We're here today on the Pack Saddle Wildlife Management Area to talk about waterways for wildlife. Um, this is a new landscape level initiative uh, developed by the National Wild Turkey Federation that covers 10 states in the Great Plains, Texas up to North Dakota and Montana back down to New Mexico. This landscape level initiative was designed to address critically urgent conservation needs in riparian ecosystems, which is the area along streams and rivers. Through this initiative, we're doing several different kinds of wildlife habitat practices, such as planting trees, shrubs, and native grasses, um, removing invasive species like Eastern red cedar, like we are here on Pack Saddle Wildlife Management Area, um, Russian olive, uh, tamarisk, we are also doing grazing, uh, restoration, infrastructure, kind of management. So these projects are being funded through um, NWTF Superfund, which is our uh, proceeds that come from the hunting heritage banquets, um, as well as some private donor funds currently. Uh, we are looking, this initiative was, a, it's a 10 year initiative that we are hoping to raise um, $10 million to be matched with $40 million of partner funds. So it would make it a $50 million initiative that is going back onto the landscape to address these um, habitat issues along riparian areas in the Great Plains. National Wild Turkey Federation is a conservation nonprofit. Our mission is to conserve the wild turkey and preserve our hunting heritage. We work with all kinds of partners between state agencies, other nonprofits, federal agencies. And so we're here today with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation to talk about Pack Saddle Wildlife Management Area and this Waterways for Wildlife project that we have going on. We're focused on the wild turkey, but we are looking to improve habitat for all wildlife species. So what you see all around me is where we've been doing this project. Uh, we've been chewing up these cedar trees. So we call it masticating. Literally means to chew them up with big drum grinders on machines. And so now that we've removed these cedar trees, uh, now native forbs, uh, native grasses, they can come up and make that good upland habitat, this riparian river habitat that the turkeys and the quail, everything will utilize uh, in the cottonwood trees. Their turkeys can now roost in them. Uh, some of these smaller trees, it'll make good brood habitat. 
and loafing habitat. And now in the future, we'll be able to maintain this habitat through fire, through prescribed fire. The cedar trees were gonna act as a ladder fuel and they would have destroyed the cottonwood trees. So we couldn't do a prescribed burn in there without having removed these. So now all around me, as you can see, is some of this active work that we're talking about in this project. Now that the cedar trees are gonna be removed on over 2,000 acres, forbs and native grasses can now come back and make this wildlife habitat. And in the future, we're gonna maintain that through a prescribed burn program, which is gonna keep the woody invasives down, keep the woody encroachment away, and let these native plants, these native forbs, uh, come up to make good roosting habitat for quail and these cottonwood trees, good brooding habitat, feed everything that our wildlife needs to thrive. So to the average person, this may not look very pretty, um, but to me, this looks like the makings of some really good turkey habitat. Um, through the eastern red cedar removal and invasive species removal on this project, we're creating really good turkey habitat on PAC Saddle WMA, but through the Waterways for Wildlife initiative, we have actually funded 14 projects this past year and across um, eight out of our 10 states in, in this initiative. So this is a very competitive program. We were able to fund 14 projects in eight out of our 10 state um, initiative area. Through this program this past year, we, we funded $167,000 worth of projects that included $2.8 million of partner match uh, between all the state agencies, federal agencies, um, other nonprofits as well. Through these projects, we'll be impacting roughly 7,600 acres on 80 stream miles, similar to uh, the Canadian River right here that you can see in the background. The way this initiative differs from the NWTF Superfund program is that Superfund money comes from proceeds from our hunting heritage banquets that are put on by all of our local chapters across the country. The, the Waterways for Wildlife initiative funding is coming from private donors along with our state super funds. So the state chapters have a connection to this initiative um, across all 10 states. So this is one of the active sites for this restoration project. Uh, you can see the machinery working behind me. And the great thing about these projects is as soon as those cedar trees are removed, turkeys will literally start moving in and utilizing that area. There's no wait time like with a prescribed fire or like when you plant a food plot and you have to wait on that result. This is instant. And, and I'm just excited. Uh, when the turkey numbers in Oklahoma declined, the Department of Wildlife, we rolled our sleeves up. We didn't just change regulations. Uh, we got out in the field and controlled the things that we can control, like cutting down cedar trees and making the habitat great again. Common names for our fish and wildlife don't always measure up, but the name Red Air Slider is a near custom fit for our state's most abundant turtle. They have red markings behind the eye just above the covered ear canals, and basking turtles are well known for sliding into the water when disturbed. Red Air Sliders may spend a lot of time in or around the water, but their nest must be on dry land. Females will dig a small chamber in the ground and deposit three to 17 eggs depending on her size. The eggs hatch in a few months, and the quarter-sized turtles typically emerge in late summer. Like many other Oklahoma turtles, the Rider Slider is a late-maturing and long-lived species. Males may live three to five years old before they're large enough to reproduce, and females may take eight years to reach a mature size. Individuals can live for 20 to 30 years, and their shells and bodies may darken with age. If you enjoyed learning about Oklahoma's incredibly diverse fish and wildlife, I encourage you to share your own field notes. Uploading your photographs and sighting details to apps like eBird and iNaturalist is one of the best ways to get involved in conservation. Um, today we did our 33rd successful release of a bald eagle back into the wild. Um, it's been a long, you know, we've been open since 2006, so a long 14, going on 15 years. Um, I did a ceremony here um, for this eagle and for the people that was here. Um, the Iowa tribe and other tribes in the United States and throughout, you know, the Canadas and in you know, Mexico, um, we use eagle feathers for traditional reasons. We believe, my tribe believes that the eagle was the only thing to see the face of the creator. So when that bird flew out of the sun, it dropped feathers to us. And we believe if we use those feathers, 
um, for ceremonies, then um, the God takes those prayers. We use that cedar and that smoke, then God will take those prayers and, and help us out. So when we did this for this eagle here, um, we prayed that he would take off and fly very well, really well. And I prayed for all the ones that were here, the ones from the Eagle Aviary, my family, my little girl, and the one Smoke on Fish and Wildlife uh, Department. Um, so we use these feathers in the ceremony for um, a lot of good things. So um, I was given this right by my Uncle Victor um, when I was about eight years old, and I've slowly learned the craft of it and able to be able to use that cedar and that tobacco and those feathers for that purpose. Um, that's a little bit about what I did. Um, the Awe tribe is uh, one of 39 uh, federally recognized tribes in Oklahoma um, and one of uh, hundreds of throughout the United States that have those same type of values. So. I mean, I thought it was really cool. I mean, the, the, the fact that, that they can rehabilitate these animals and put them back in the wild uh, is, just, is just tremendous. Uh, I want to thank, uh, thank the tribe for all their hard work and the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife for what they do and the support that they have uh, for these beautiful, beautiful, majestic animals. You know, as a game warden, it's awesome to see uh, the birds that we pick up get released. It's, we don't always get to do that, so it's an awesome experience. And then to, to see the ceremony that they, they do to go along with it, uh, it, it makes it that much more special. So, pretty awesome. Every year we have a number of calls come in on injured birds or other injured wildlife. This particular call come in to Spencer Grace, who's a K County warden. The bird was actually in Osage County, so Spencer relayed the call to me. Uh, I went out to the site. And the bird was right off uh, highway, highway 60, which runs through Osage County. And the bird was surrounded or being chased by a bunch of young cattle, steers. And there were about 10 cars that were watching this eagle because he was so visible to the highway. And so I, I showed up and I went out into the field and uh, caught the bird with a net. And at that point, once I knew that it was an eagle, I contacted the, the Iowa tribe and we agreed to meet later that night. And so that was the process and how we come about the eagle. It was from originally from the public uh, calling, trying to get help for the bird, the call coming to, to Spencer coming to me and then I called the Iowa tribe. Larry called me once he had obtained the bird from Spencer and we met up here at Sooner Lake to, uh, for me to get the individual. It was about 11 o'clock at night. And we were able to get him back to our facility for an assessment and future care. Um, so he didn't have anything that was broken. There wasn't any toxins in his system. And so essentially it came down to a soft tissue injury. And those can take a short amount of time to a long amount of time to heal. Um, but this guy is doing great out in his cage. He's able to fly from end to end, obtain food out of our pond. Um, and he was definitely ready to go back to the wild. So we're a unique state that we have both uh, golden and bald eagles here in Oklahoma. Um, we're run by the Iowa tribe of Oklahoma, in which eagles are a very, very important uh, part of their culture. And so we invite anybody that wants to come out to learn about eagles, how they play into the tribal uh, culture, how they play into the ecosystem, uh, to come out and visit us at the Gray Snow Eagle House. flow sometimes fish will pile up there trying to catch something. So we'll see. I'm gonna ask another silly question Danny on this uh -huh. dinger that I have on here. Yeah. Will the is it likely that the fish can pull that whole thing off and I'll come up out of the water with nothing on the end of my fishing pole? Depends on line. You could the line could get broke. Okay. I had mine broke the other day. Dang it. <laughs> um so how did you tie in the lure? Just basically use what I always use, which is an improved clinch knot. And and these are, everybody calls them Senkos because Gary Yamamoto made them first. But now everybody else makes them. These are made by Young. These are called Dingers. For snacks, I just brought a few Nature Valley granola bars. That way I can keep my energy up while maximizing my fishing time without having to get off the water. Pike fishing is something that's been around a long time. Uh, started on the coasts. Now it's moved inland to fresh water. 
and uh, it's really really picking up popularity here uh, even since last year our our numbers in our kayak bass fishing tournaments have gone up nearly twice as much as we had last year for each event it's an easy way to to get off the bank get out of the weeds and go fishing you know So let your let Horse. your rod up at the boat. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would help. Yeah, so this is my first time kayak fishing, and uh, couldn't ask for a better day to come out and be on the water. Um, also on a new lake that I've never been to. Um, happened to catch uh, a few fish, good sized fish. So we got to try the whole experience. Um, with the weather being so nice and the winds being calm, the water was really easy to, to float around on and the kayaks uh, were even better because they had pedals for us to work on and so we weren't having to paddle everywhere and really it's just a good overall experience, especially for, for my first time. <laughs> the camera, is it facing you and me or straight ahead of us? It's facing us. Oh, okay, all right, start again. Ashley. Darren, I hope you enjoy watching all this film later. <laughs> Jessica, right. are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Look, <laughs> Lake Tonkawala. <laughs> Where are we? Um, we are about to crash into the shore right now. Uh, we're busy. <laughs> Whoop, there we go. Turn it around. Turn it around. Uh, yes, this is a great spot. It is quiet. The scenery is beautiful. Are you still filming? Yeah. Oh. It's quiet. The scenery is beautiful. The fish have been plentiful for Corey. Not so much for me, but that's okay. Um, She's having fun holding my pole while I reel in the fish or while I take the fish off the hook and yes, release it. Every <laughs> captain needs a good skipper. Today, that's me. But we're having a blast. This kayak, uh, it's actually fun to be with somebody else. This is albeit my first time to kayak, and I'm glad that I'm not in one alone because we can chat, laugh. We can oh. correct each other's terrible paddling skills. Although, to be fair, I don't know that we've used our paddle all that much because we have these handy dandy foot pedals that do all the work and we just turn this little guy here to guide us. Also, just take note of how beautiful of a day it is. And very few people on the water, they don't know what fish they're missing by being gone. Most of us initially think, let's get out with our spouse, our significant other. Getting out with, um, in this case, a fellow coworker and another female is absolutely doable. Um, you know, we, neither of us have kayaked before, um, kayak fished for sure. And, you know, I was a little unsure, like, will we both be able to cast? Will we have problems going in a circle? It's absolutely doable. And if you're it, stuck inside and say, I want to, but not sure I can, I 100 percent recommend getting out and trying it because I think you'll have a blast you'll get to enjoy nature and maybe catch a fish along the way that's a bonus how many fish is this oh it's only four all right guys we are going to see Danny has got a fish in the net wow that's a good sized fish Look at nice fish, nice rig. I've never been to this part of the state, but Lake Talawanda is absolutely beautiful. I mean, there's no bad day on the water, right? At least that's what I've always heard. And today is no exception to that. Nice. Actually, might be bigger than all the ones I caught. Biggest one of the day? You said I was gonna I get I think it, it is. <laughs> oh, and and you got an easy hook. An easy hook, I know. Nice. If you haven't done it yet, try it. Uh, the kayak shops in Oklahoma City and Tulsa have demo days where you can go out and try different boats. Get, get after it and get, have some fun. The whole family can do it.
like that. That's going to be a fun retreat. Oh, all right. Good girl. Ah, that's always hey, the hardest. Good hard shot, Director. Always the hardest. Yeah, he's good. First Thank burn. You. Thank you. There you go. Hey, excellent. All right. Hey, good shoot. Come on. Girl. Come on. Yeah, easy. Easy. <laughs> Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Here you go. Here. Thank you. Susie's got one. Come on, Sue. Come on, let's go. And uh, we try to stay consistent. Um, we have actually burnt every piece of this property in the last three years. Well, we hope today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is the perfect place to explore. So however you choose to enjoy our state's incredible natural world, remember, your adventure starts with Outdoor Oklahoma. Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma.